Good morning. It's Thursday, September the 12th, 2013. Um, this is the Agoracom News TV. I've done my morning routine, which is to go through a bunch of press releases and uh, try to find the best uh, that stand out to me and uh, give you my insight into why uh, what uh, about the news stood out to me. And uh, ultimately, the goal is to find, help you find companies that uh, are worth you doing your homework on and ultimately find some winners in there as well. I'm Alan Barry Labucan. I'm the Chief Market Commentator for Agoracom. Today I have nine companies that I wanted to talk about, so we've got tons of news to talk about, and I'm going to get right to it. The first one today is from Free Gold uh, Ventures. Uh, the headline is that they intersect 3.0 grams per ton gold over 27 meters in resource expansion drilling on their Golden Summit project in Alaska. Um, they've, uh, they announced that they received the final assay results from their 2013 uh, Dolphin Cleary Summer Program uh, for their Road Accessible Golden Summit project. Uh, this Golden Summit project is located approximately 30 road kilometers to the northeast of Fairbanks, Alaska. Uh, they drilled three holes uh, in the Dolphin Deposit area uh, for a total of 1,666 meters. Uh, during the summer program, um, the uh, first hole from the summer program intersected 180 meters grading 1.13 grams per ton gold uh, and averaged 0.82 grams per ton gold over the fi entire 585 meter intersection. Uh, then they had another hole, uh, two holes from this year's program to go with those uh, that other hole. Um, for example, one hole hit a 552 meter interval of 0.68 grams per ton gold. Uh, had some high-grade um, uh, uh, sub-intervals in there as well, 27.13 uh, meters of three, 3 grams per ton gold, had another 66-meter intersection of 1.76, another 8.53-meter interval of uh, 7.49 um, grams per ton gold. Uh, another hole they had was uh, 520 meters, of 0.49 grams per ton gold, again some uh, some higher grade uh, sub intervals is in there as well. So obviously, uh, free gold has a, um, a you know a large tonnage target here um, with some decent grades in a project that's very close to um, uh, to uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. Uh, so they also note and announced that they're doing some comprehensive metallurgical uh, work uh, and the results will be incorporated into a preliminary economic assessment that they're doing on the uh, Dolphin Cleary area. Uh, they don't note when they expect to have that done. Um, so yeah, there you go. You've got a uh, in this company, you've got a, a good uh, high tonnage type target up in uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, with very promising grades and um, I like the location. Um, the stock symbol on this one is FVL and it trades on the Toronto Exchange. The next company I wanted to talk about today was Ascot Resources. Uh, they announced uh, the headline is intersects 10 meters of 33.66 grams per ton gold at Premier. Um, they announced that Ascot continues to encounter wide zones of gold and silver mineralization in all the target areas of the Premier and Dilworth properties. Uh, results have been received from ALS for 26 of 42 holes drilled to date, um, and they've uh, which um, works out to about 7,200 meters of the planned 20. 1,000 meter drill program. Um, the remainder of the holes have, have uh, results pending. Uh, drilling will continue for the past, uh, for the remainder of the season uh, with three ASCOT drills. Uh, wide zones of gold mineralization can continue to be encountered. For example, one of the holes had 89.62 meters 
which started very close to surface at only 28 meters below surface uh, with 1.06 grams per ton gold and 2.7 grams per ton silver. Uh, there was a sub-interval there of 30 meters at the end of that hole, uh, 30.85 meters of 2.64 grams per ton gold and 4.4 grams per ton silver. Uh, another hole that they had, uh, again, very close to surface, 45 meters of 1.40 grams per ton gold and 3.1 grams per ton silver. Uh, good sub-interval there of 2 meters of 14.80 grams per ton gold and 11.5 um, uh, um, silver, grams per ton silver. Uh, those, uh, then you've got, um, those are for, both from the uh, S1 zone. Then they had uh, some drill results from their province and BM zone, 144 meters of 1.37 grams per ton gold, 3.1, 3.3 grams per ton silver. Um, very consistent results here. Uh, thick intersections, uh, close to surface, good grades. You can find a, a whole list of the uh, of those assay results in the table that's uh, in the news release. Um, they go on that um, they were drilling to expand the zones, uh, the known zones, and demonstrate the continuity of previous high-grade intersections uh, as well as expand and improve drill definition in the resource area. Um, this, uh, in August, the company received 1.189 million from the exercise of warrants. This combined with the gross 5.75 million raised in pre recent private placements provides the company with sufficient funding to take it well into 2014. I believe that this project, I, it always kind of bugs me when companies don't put where the project is located in their press releases, um, but uh, I'm just clicking on their website right now. And yes, this project is in Stewart, British Columbia. Stewart, British Columbia is a very well-known uh, area and um, from geological perspective, and uh, these are very promising results. I, I like the thick intersections. I like that it's close to surface. Uh, I like that they've got some high-grade sub-intervals in there as well. Um, the stock symbol on this one is AOT, and that trades on the uh, Venture Exchange. Very interesting company there. Uh, the next company I wanted to talk about is Orico. Orico Gold. Excuse me. Uh, provides an update on the 2013 Elchin 8 exploration program. This project is in Sonora, Mexico. Um, the objective of the 2013 program is to further delineate mineralization with the within the existing open pit and expand the known uh, mineralization along the Chenate trend in order to potentially convert the mineralization into mineral resources. Uh, they, since May, they've uh, at their El Chenate, they've drilled uh, 80 holes for 19,000 19, meters to date within the current open pit and three areas located along straight to the open pit. Um, one of those holes, for example, these are highlights. One hole had 54 meters of 2.56 grams per ton gold. Another one had 48 meters of 2.90 grams per ton gold. Another had two, six meters of uh, 7.60 grams per ton gold. And another had 24 meters of 2.70 grams per ton gold. Um, very interesting results there. There's a quote. Uh, from Chris Rockingham, who's the VP of uh, Exploration. Uh, he stated, and I quote, the 2013 exploration program continues to report encouraging results from both the in-pit drilling program, where intercept reported grades significantly higher than reserve grades, as well as from the target areas that lie along the Chinate 
default where the majority of polls were higher than current cutoff grades. The results to date provide additional confidence in the potential for resource growth and mine life extension at El Chenate. Um, they give you a table there with all the various different drill hole results. You can find that on the company's website. Orico has about a billion dollar valuation right now. They've got 247 million shares out trading at four dollars a share. Um, definitely a company you want to do some homework into. Uh, the stock symbol on that one is AUQ and that trades on the uh, Toronto Exchange. The next company I wanted to talk about today is Euromax. Euromax announces discovery drill hole at Gradina KMC, uh, which is in Serbia. Uh, Euromax uh, provided results of diamond core drilling at that Gradina target. Uh, the Gradina target is in the southern part of the 23 square kilometer KMC license. Uh, the KMC license mineral mineralization includes thick sequences of gold copper scarns, gold scarns, zinc lead copper gold scarns, and volcanic hosted mineralized silica breccias. Um, they go on and give you some of the details of the drilling. Had some uh, interesting grades in there, 33.9 meters uh, of 0.93 grams per ton gold and 0.51 percent uh, zinc, uh, sub interval of 1.98 grams per ton gold and 1.59 percent zinc over 8.2 meters. Uh, another intersection had 103 meters of 1.75 grams per ton gold and 0 0.80 gra uh, percent zinc. Um, and uh, the ones that uh, kind of caught my attention was from their Hole, they call it EOKSC1361B, uh, which hit uh, 45 meters of 5.02 grams per ton gold and 0.54% zinc. Uh, included in there, uh, they had 31 meters of 6.81 grams per ton gold and 0.75% zinc. There was an additional sub interval of 14, uh, 10.4 meters of 14.78 grams per ton gold and 1.8% um, zinc. So very interesting results there. Um, the uh, Pat Forward, who's the chief operating officer of the company, said it, and I quote, these significant drill results on the previously untested Gradina target are very exciting since this was a blind target and it represents a significant new discovery for the company. The results underline the potential of the KMC mineralized system to hold significant widths of mineralization and that the extent of the zones indicated by the geophysics has been confirmed by drilling. It is a great result for the exploration team and dem demonstrates their ability to find new and significant mineralization at KMC and throughout the region. We look forward to receiving further results from for this year's drill program, end quote. So, um, you know, it's a blind target. They made a new discovery, very interesting grades. I like some of the uh, uh, higher grade stuff that they're hitting there. It's fairly close to surface. It's in Serbia. Serbia is certainly not a com country that I've followed a, a lot of companies from, but, um, uh, you know, these results are quite interesting, and I will be doing some more homework on that company. The stock symbol for the, the Euromax is EOX, and that trades on the Venture Exchange. Uh, the next company I wanted to talk about is Fission Uranium and Alpha Minerals. Uh, these two companies have uh, have a great uh, discovery uh, in, in, in the Saskatchewan project called the Patterson Lake South project. Uh, and uh, recently, not well, for quite several months now, they've been coming out with some very good drill results. And then recently, the two companies have come towards uh, a letter of intent on a potential merger, um, where they merge their two uh, interests in the um, in the Patterson Lake project uh, into one entity. Um, and they had more results out today. Uh, the headline is 4.7 meters total composite off-scale at Fission 
expand zone 78E. Um, <clears throat> they, uh, they have provided results from two new mineralized holes from the R780E zone at its Patterson Lake South property in Athabasca Basin. A particular note is PLS 13-082 located 15 meters east and 10 meters north of hole PLS 13-8080 which was 13.41 meters of total composite off scale see August 12, 2013 which returned 4.7 meters total composite off scale uh, more than 9,999 CPS uh, mineralization in 54 meters of mineralization. Why this is uh, um, important is that uh, these surveys that they do on the drill core uh, that tend to be uh, fairly good at predicting uh, future high grade doesn't give you a, uh, a you know a lab quality result, but it certainly has been um, a strong correlation between high CPS numbers in in these um, in these preliminary uh, radiometric type surveys and uh, and um, with the handheld scintillometer and uh, and what they get from the lab so these are uh, potentially some very good holes there uh, there's a quote from Ross McElroy who's the president COO and chief geologist for fission who commented and I quote zone 780E continues to develop as it does its potential as a high grade zone of these results whole PLS 13-082 is particularly interesting as its location and level of mineralization has significantly enhanced our understanding of how and where this zone may be expanding um, so not only are they getting very good results um, from the um, from the, uh, uh, the 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 drilling that they're doing, but that drilling is giving them a better understanding of of the mineralization and where to follow it, um, which is extremely important as well because that will help them to you know get an idea of how big things are getting there at the uh, project. I think that this is a, um, 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 a world-class discovery that uh, Fission and Alpha have made. I'm very excited about this project. I think that these two companies uh, could be takeover targets down the road for this Patterson Lake South project. Um, definitely one you want to do your homework on. I'm, I just can't be happier with all the results that I'm seeing from these uh, from this project. It's extremely high grade. It's close to surface. Um, you know, these are uh, these are things that, and it looks like it's got the potential to have a, a very significant sized footprint for as such a high grade discovery. Um, so, again, I, I think that this one's uh, one that will uh, is on the uh, target list of every major uh, uranium uh, mining company that's involved in Saskatchewan. Um, and uh, I like it a lot. The stock symbol for Fission is FCU, and that trades on the uh, Venture Exchange. And for Alpha Minerals, the stock symbol is AMW, and that trades also on the uh, Venture Exchange. The next company I wanted to talk about today is Alpha, uh, AQM Copper. Um, they have released updated preliminary economic assessment for their Zafranel Copper Gold project. Um, they completed a positive independent updated preliminary economic assessment or PEA uh, of the, uh, the Zafranel project which is in southern Peru, uh, Peru Porphyry Copper Belt. Uh, the PEA, this PEA update follows the PEA issued on January the 18th, 2013, uh, which was based on concentrator, concentrator throughput of 80,000 tons per day, producing an average of 93,000 tons per annum of copper in concentrate and a heat leach and electro winning, or electro winning 
uh, process expected to yield an average of 9,276 9, tons per annum of high quality copper cathode from oxide and secondary sulfide mineral material. Um, the uh, PEA was done by TetraTech. Uh, there's a quote here from um, that, uh, or I, I can go over some of the details. There's, they're looking at a initial capital cost of 1.1 billion, uh, net cash flow of 3.592 billion, net present value at a 5.5% discount of 1.85 billion. Um, they've got some different discounts there that give you different uh, um, uh, net at present values, their payback in, uh, on that uh, building and production is 2.6 years uh, with an internal rate of return of 25.4%. Uh, some very good numbers in there. Uh, they also give the resource numbers. Um, they give you an idea of uh, some of the parameters that go into the, uh, or, or some of the highlights. Uh, you can find that in the press release. There's a quote from Bruce Turner, who's the President and Chief Executive Officer of AQM, he stated, and I quote, we are very pleased with the results of the PEA update at, as it provides the company with an attractive alternative project development to that considered in the January 2013 PEA on the basis of water supply, site layout, and capital and operating cost. As a result of our engagement with the regional and local authorities and representatives of organizations of water users, we believe the Magus River will provide a viable water supply alternative to the previously proposed desalination plant, and we will continue to discuss this option with communities located in the Magus River Basin. In addition, changes to the layout and mine plan, which now include a 3.7 kilometer tunnel to feed material from the pit to the mill coupled with the reduced production requirements set has significantly reduced our capital and, and operating cost estimates. We believe the revi revised plan to be an attractive option and the proposed production levels provide an, an, levels provide an opportunity to optimize feed grade throughout the life of the mine. We are now in a position to decide on an appropriate development scenario for the project and take it to the le next level of engineering. Then they've got uh, significantly more details in this press release. I suggest that you look at it uh, on the company's website. It's a very interesting project. Quite surprising that the company only has about a $13 million uh, market value considering that you're talking about such a... Um, a significant project here, uh, but that's sort of the state of the market, especially for juniors that are involved in uh, copper. Um, but you know, I, I'm a very bullish on the long-term prospects of copper, and uh, finding these kind of projects is not easy. Uh, so again, I think uh, AQM is a good one for you to uh, do your homework on. And the stock symbol for the company is AQM, and that trades on the Venture Exchange. The next company I wanted to talk about is Klondex. Klondex mines underground development yields 1,465 tons of 32.7 grams per ton gold in July. Uh, Klondex um, did underground development program targeting the Joyce and Vonnie structures within the main zone of their Fire Creek project. It yielded 1,329 tons uh, of mineralized material in July at an average grade of 32.7 grams per ton of gold. Underground development at the Fire Creek project over the last three months has yielded 3,249 tons of uh, mineralized material averaging 75.4 grams per ton gold. Wow, some good numbers in there. Uh, Klondex continues to develop on the Joyce and structure and the Vani uh, structure during July. Um, Paul Hewitt, who is Klondex president and CEO, stated 
through our, and I quote, through our underground development program, we continue to see very encouraging gold grades and are gaining an excellent understanding of the geology, structure, and gold mineralization of the Fire Creek deposit. Uh, we've made tremendous progress over the past year as a direct result of our dedicated team, and I'm thankful for their devotion to Clondex and to advancing the Fire Creek pro uh, project, end quote. Um, this uh, this uh, is, a, is a really interesting project. Um, I'm liking what I'm seeing from some of these, uh, the technical details there. Um, just uh, getting to the company's website, they didn't include where Fire Creek is located. Again, I wish more companies would include where the project is located. I kind of knew where it was, but I wanted to confirm it's in north central Nevada. Um, didn't want to give you a bad uh, information there. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Uh, a good project, um, interesting results. Good company to do your homework on. The stock symbol for that one is KDX, and that trades on the Toronto Exchange. Uh, the next company I wanted to talk about today is North American Nickel. Uh, North American Nickel, the headline is Third Mineralized Zone Discovered Near Imiac Hill near solid to solid sulfide zones at the Imiac North, Manitsoc, and Southwest Greenland. Um, they, uh, they, uh, the, re the press release indicates a new discovery has been made by North American Nickel and VMS Ventures Inc. with diamond drill hole MQ13-029. The discovery named Imiac North is a 950 meters northeast of the previously announced Imiac intersections. Those were previously announced on August the 23rd and September the 5th of this year uh, and 1,200 meters northwest of the previously announced Spotty Hill discovery. You can see the uh, announcement dated December 23rd, 2012. So it looks like they've got a whole new uh, discovery here. Uh, the, mineral, the three mineralized zones are part of the newly named Imiac Kill Conduit Complex, uh, which is in, in located in the northeast part of the company's 100% owned Manitsuk Nickel, Copper, Cobalt, and PGM project in southwestern Greenland. Um, they announced that they had 9.99 meters of core length of near solid to solid sulfides, averaging 30 to 30. 40% total sulfides. Uh, another hole had 45.7 meters of core length of disseminated blemmy and neck textured sulfide mineralization, approx um, averaging approximately 3 to 5 percent sulfide. Percent sulfides. Uh, there's a quote from Rick Mark, who is the chief executive officer of North American Nickel. He stated, and I quote, we are very pleased to inform shareholders that the company's exploration program continues to deliver discoveries of near solid to sulfide, solid sulfide mineralization at Monitsoc. This discovery at Imiac North is in close vicinity to Imiac Hills nickel, copper, cobalt mineralization and Spotty Hills nickel, copper, cobalt and PGM mineralization. And according to our borehole surveys, these mineralized zones are all open at depth. This follows the conduit model our geological team is using, anticipating the nickel mineralization to accumulate in an embayment or footwall contact below these discoveries." End quote. So <clears throat> not only do they have what looks like a very interesting discovery so far from their drill results, it looks like they're just on the top of some kind of system and they uh, anticipate that as they go even deeper that there's uh, that things could get really exciting as they go deeper. North American nickel stock symbol is um, NAN. It trades on the Venture Exchange. This is definitely one I think you want to uh, keep your eye on and do some homework on. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from that uh, a new discovery type project. Um, so that's the uh, that's all the press releases for today, um, and uh, as usual, what my goal is with that uh, every morning, 
Uh, I've done this since 2005 when I originally started doing my Alan Berry reports. Every morning I go through all the press releases and try to find the best ones to do my homework on. And ultimately that's how I've found a lot of winners over the years uh, in my reports. Um, uh, one thing that I'm very proud of uh, from my Alan Berry reports, of I, I, over the years I've featured about 50 companies in there uh, and almost half of those companies were either takeovers uh, or um, became uh, converted from junior explorers into producers. I'm very proud of that statistic and uh, a lot of it had to do uh, with my daily routine and now I'm providing that for uh, for all of our viewers at Agoracom and also at Allen Berry Reports and uh, right before your eyes you can see the homework that I do uh, on a daily basis I sort of am out there fishing around trying to find good news releases uh, and then at the end of the week which is tomorrow uh, George Chiolis who's the founder of Agoracom and I we go over and uh, I pick the best of the best of the uh, weekly morning in the news shows and I have a best of the best in weekly news uh, tomorrow. So I invite you to tune into that. That show is becoming very popular. Uh, we've had a lot of good successes, uh, successful picks uh, in that show so far and uh, the show is definitely starting to get a lot of attention. So I invite you to check that out. You can find all of the the feature shows that we do uh, on my website at allenberryreports.com. Uh, you can go to blog.agoracom.com for all of our featured shows. For our in, for the in the news shows, I also put those out on my uh, allenberryreports.com website, and you can also find those at agoracom uh, um, on agoracom.com's main page, where they have on the right hand side the uh, viewer for those shows. So we're putting out a lot of work here at Agoracom and uh, putting out a lot of good results uh, that I think is very helpful for our audience. On that note, I'm going to wrap it up and um, thank you for uh, you know watching the show today. Before I'm closing, I always like to stress that this, it's important for you to do your homework and speak with your financial advisors before making any investment decision. Uh, on that note, you have a great weekend. We'll see you again on Monday, and have a great day.